So, if you've been wondering if the uh, eBay auctions for Flash Forge Dreamers as parts only are worth it, for me it's been worth it anyway. First one that I've done a lot of modifications to, I paid $350 for. The second one over here uh, with shipping and everything came to about $650, which is still way less than half the price of a new Dreamer. And in both cases, you could tell the machines hadn't hardly been used at all. Uh, in the case of the second one, the main failure uh, was the cooling fan on the left extruder. This one over here it was defective, so anytime you'd try to print uh, PLA or anything, you'd have a jam, of course, because the cooling block would get hot and your filament would expand before it can enter the extrusion tube. So that's, you know, that's like a $2 fix getting another fan on there. Uh, one important thing you should do, whether you're feeding your filament from inside or from the back, like I modded that, or from the top, doesn't really make any difference. Take an extra piece of the Teflon tubing, your PTF tubing, and just slide it into here. Without it, the filament where it enters this uh, ABS plastic top will wear a groove in there. I mean, in less than a week, you'll have a groove all the way back. And the main problem with the groove, of course, it causes binding and pinching, but all of that plastic that I got wore, wore away has to go somewhere, and little particles of it will uh, get down into your tip, finally. And be, if you're printing PLA like me, and this plastic up here has a very high melt temperature, it won't melt, so you'll end up with jams and plugs. So you just slide a little piece of the tubing. If you're not using the old tubes they had back here, just get a piece of that and shove it in there, and it'll... Uh, very low friction way of keeping that from happening. Uh, a lot of other mods, a lot of people don't like the, the bright blue lights on all the time. Of course, one easy way to do it is just uh, unplug them, but they are RGB lights, which means green, red, blue. They have a common 24 volt line, and the other three lines are for controlling the colors. So you could interrupt those wires, which are right here. If you liked uh, controlling your colors, you could put switches here and make it red, green, blue, whatever you want. In my case, I decided a single switch to turn them on or turn them off uh, on the one that I've done a lot of mods to. And I'll, also on this one I've added mods, I went ahead and put an LED down on the bottom next to the print nozzle. That's what I want to see anyway. So, um, great machines for the money, do a great print job. Uh, the main changes I wanted to make on this first one that I got, I made quite a few. Sometimes I'm out in my shop and it's cool and I don't need the rear fans running. So I went and put a switch on there so I can kill them. Or I can have them on, whichever I want. Like I say, I added a switch for the uh, LEDs, fan LEDs. One of the things that would be nice if the Dreamer had was a way to change the temperature of the hot end while you're printing. I run a lot of different filaments. They all have different temperatures. They're all different manufacturers. I don't want to have to go back into the Flash Forge software and re-slice every file for a different temperature. You know, slice one at 195, one at 200C, one at 205C, one at two, you know, on and on. Just gets ridiculous when you have hundreds of files, which I do. So, what I decided to do early on after having printed ABS and PLAs, I decided I'm never going to print ABS again. I don't like ABS. It stinks. It's hard to get a good non-warped if you're doing large flat parts, which I was at the time. So I made my machine, this one, a PLA machine. It can still do ABS, but I, my, my thought when I was making my mods was let's get rid of the dual extrusion. I'm never going to do dual extrusion. That's a pain in the butt. Uh, in my case, I decided to keep the right extruder as the working one. The motor has to build a bump, a limit switch over here. So if you decide to keep your left instead of the right, you need to make up a metal bracket or something so that there is something, in fact, to hit that switch. So I just kept the right, junked the left. It was plugged anyway when I got it. Got that heavy motor off there. Left the cooling fan and the little heat sink tied it in with this one so they're both running to keep your cooling block right there nice and cool that works out great uh, but the main change getting back to what I was after was to be able to change the temperature is on the back here I made a plate 
I put a 100 ohm pot and a switch and I uh, went across the, um, they don't use thermistors in the Dreamers, they use thermocouples and uh, the difference between them is a thermistor is a resistor and you can measure resistance. A thermocouple is basically just two dissimilar metals twisted together, dead short. But because they're dissimilar metals, as they get hot, they, they generate a small voltage potential, which gets amplified, and that's how they can tell the temperature at the, at the extruder at the hot end. So I put my switch in series with the 100 ohm pot, went across the, uh, across the thermocouple on the right side, and even though I'm not using the left anymore, it still will show, uh, if we can get it on the screen here, it still will always show the temperature if there is one. So I went ahead and just screwed that uh, on, on your extruder block, the, the, the holes where the sensors are go all the way through. So I have one sensor on one side and one on the other. By doing that, I can flip the switch in whenever I want to boost my temperature. So if I save all my files on the low end, say 200C, but I need to be printing at 210, flip the switch, turn the knob, just wait until the left one shows me the actual temperature, and just crank it up and I can get any temperature I want on the head. It maintains it perfectly. So that allowed me to uh, do on-the-fly changes of temperature, which are really handy. What else? Well, in this particular one, I went with the uh, spool in the back. Works out good. If you drop a little piece of the tube here, when this pulls out a lot, the loop will stay up here so the slack won't come back on your spool and you won't end up getting a knotted, twisted, hanging spool. On this vertical one, which I just made out of some old uh, junk PVC pipe, I've got this uh, board, which has got a, a bungee on it and it just drags on the spool. What that allows though is when the filament is pulled out and then the head moves back over, again, the spool doesn't go all crazy and get looped. I've had lots of problems where through the course of a print, spools, whether they're on top or they're on the back, they go loose, they'll start looping over each other and you'll end up getting a lot of binding and it can become a real problem. Nice thing about this setup is this board not only adds drag to the spool, but also if I lift it, the spool can then slide right off, but the spool can't get off as long as the board has got it uh, locked in there. So, yeah, if you can pick one up for 350, 650 top, definitely the way to go. Work great.